hi guys welcome back to the channel this is nasa strad today we'll be learning how to make um trendy and stylish necklines if it's something you're interested in keep watching give this video a thumbs up subscribe if you're yet to subscribe to the channel and let's get into this so for this video i've gone ahead to draft out a basic bodice and i use that to cut out several pieces that i'll be using to draft out the necklines so what you need to note for this is that the width of the neckline is directly proportional to the depth so when you have a wider width you should have um, a less deep neck okay so your the neck should not be deep and vice versa so the first thing we'll be starting with today is the queen and neckline so for this for our neck width i'll be using a neck width of three inches so i just mark that down and then for the neck depth i'll be using a neck depth of seven inches i'm sorry if you cannot see my tape accurately then the next thing I'm going to do is that from the beginning, I will come down by four inches or so, and I'll make a mark at that point. Now on that four inches point that I just marked, I will just rule a line there to indicate it. Okay. Then I'll also mark what I have on the neck width at that point also. So remember I said three inches, so I'll go ahead and mark three inches at this point also. All right. Then now I'm going to take the measurement from after my neck width down to the shoulder point. That's what's remaining of of from what I have there. I will take that and I will divide it by two. So in my case, I have four and a half inches. I went ahead to divide that by two and I got two and a quarter. So I'm going to come in from the shoulder area. Sorry, from the armhole area by that which I just got, which is two and a quarter inches, okay? And then I'm going to extend this line I have here to meet that point. So you want to make sure that your line is on the straight. Your line is straight, okay? So now I'll be connecting um, this point together like so. So this part is going to be a slant, connecting it this way from the neck width down to that point like so. And then for the other end, I'm going to be using the curved part of my ruler to connect that point together so you can see how i placed my rule to connect this okay so this is just how to draft out a queen and neckline so we'll go ahead and cut this out so we can get a better view of what this looks like all right so i'm going to open this up you can see how nice this look okay this is one of the necklines i love so much it always looks pretty it gives you this unique and elegant look so i'll go ahead and label this this is the queen anne neckline all right so you can use this for any style of dress or clothes you want to make so the next one we'll be doing is the cut together keyhole neckline now there are, there's actually um, a keyhole with the yoke we'll be doing that later but this is a cut together so in the case of this the neck width i'll be using is three and a half inches i went ahead to mark three and a half inches and then i'm going to mark my neck depth so the first neck depth i'll be using for this will be three inches i just marked three inches there and i'm going in with my rule to just make a simple C curve at that end. Okay, so we've gotten that down. Now to determine where how we're going to get it. So in this um in this um type of keyhole, we are going to be cutting it together. It means it will be joined together. It just has an opening around the chest area. So you need to indicate where you need to know where your chest line is so that you don't go beyond that if you don't want your bust area to show. So from the first three inches, I went down by two inches. I made a mark there. Now from that two inches point, I'll be going in by three inches. Note that the measurements I'm using at this area 
can be changed depending on your preference okay so i just marked three inches there and then i went in and just wrote a line ensuring it was a straight line now from that point also i'm going to determine another depth now remember i said before getting this if you don't want your bust to be exposed like your cleavage to be exposed you need to note where your chest line starts from because anything that goes below your chest line is going to expose your bust so from that point i went down by one and a half inches in this case and i just marked it down so you can also change this depending on what you want and then i'm going to connect this point together like so all right so this is what we have and we'll just go ahead to cut it out like i said if you want to make any form of adjustment if you want your cleavage to show you can also drop this down or you can also expand it around the chest area if you want your chest to be more exposed so opening this up this is what this looks like now you can give this any curve so mine has like a v so it can be a c instead of this and i just went on to label that this is the cut together keyhole neckline if you've never tried this neckline you should give it a try okay so this is what this looks like okay so you can decide to just give it a c at that end instead of a v all right so the next one we'll be working on is the second type of a keyhole neckline so in this case i went down by seven inches for the first the second neck depth okay and then for the second one i marked three and a half inches then for the neck depth sorry the neck width i'll be using three and a half inches also so the first um, neck depth i used three and a half to three and a half inches of width and then i used seven inches for the second one remember i said you need to note where your chest area starts in order to not expose the bust okay now from that point i'll go down by one and a half inches and i'll mark it down so to get what we're going to use around armhole go ahead and measure what you have there and then indicate the midpoint of your armhole it is important for you to get that okay so i just went ahead to indicate that now i'm going to be connecting this to that first seven inches i came down by and i will just make it with a curve i just used my curve path the curve path of my rule to connect it together now from that point i will go in by one and a half inches at that area and i'll make a mark there all right then i'm going to connect from the one and a half inches i came down from the neck depth area that's the first neck depth area i will just connect it with my curve rule like so okay so we have that this is how this comes out in the case of this it has a yoke where you can use a different fabric for the yoke and then use a different fabric for the bodies okay but for the other one the one we did before there's initial one you have to use the same kind of fabric it's not joined at all while this one has a joining so you can use separate type of fabrics so i'm going to open this up okay so you can see how this looks like okay you can decide to use a, um, a sweet half for the down part of this if you so choose to but you can see how this looks like okay it's also another beautiful type of neckline you should give a trial if you've not done that okay so we'll go ahead and label this so i'm going to say this is the keyhole slash yoke neckline okay because it has a yoke which you can use all right so this is what we have for that then the next one we'll be working on is the sweetheart neckline so we are used to the sweetheart neckline for the neck width i'll be using a neck width of four inches i just went ahead to mark that down now for the neck depth i'll be using a neck depth of six inches so i'm just going to create like um a box for this so i'm going to take that four inches measurement again on this point so that i can get accurate lines and i'll go in with my rule and just mark those points together 
just box them up together all right okay so we have that down now the next thing i'm going to do is from um the starting point i will go down by four inches and i will make a mark there also so you want to ensure that your step is accurately placed and i mark that down i will go ahead and just rule a line to connect it to this point like so all right so i'm going to just go in with my curve room so you take note of how i'm placing my rule okay i'm using my pattern master it serves me well so just going in and place your rule this way and simply trace out what you have at the curve there is actually an easy and a simple type of neckline to make so you can see how this looks we'll go in with our scissors and just cut this out so we can get a better view of this all right so this is what it looks like okay this is a very very beautiful kind of neckline uh, i urge you to try out this type of necklines if you have not done that okay it looks quite beautiful so this is what the sweetheart looks like we'll go in with our pen and we'll just label this the sweetheart neckline ensure to give this a trial if you've not tried using a sweetheart neckline for your clothes so next next one we are working on is the scallop neckline so for this neckline we'll be using a neck width of three and a half inches i just went ahead to mark three and a half inches as my neck width okay and then we'll be using a neck depth of seven inches so you can decide to take this down more or reduce it depending on what you want okay then at that point i went on to mark three and a half inches again now this is because i want to have accurate lines when i box this up now the thing you want to note about this type of neckline is that to um your division around this area depends on how many scallops you desire how many um i would say i like saying it's a flowy type of neckline because of the curves it has so it determines on how many you want to have so in my case i want to have three of this so i went ahead to divide what i have as the depth which is seven inches into three places and from the beginning i just marked that so you want to ensure you're marking them accurately so whatever you're using go ahead and divide them into three places and then you mark it down so when i finish i have um two and a quarter inches on each piece that's each of the divisions i have and i marked it down and then i wrote a line okay so you can see i have three of them like so now what i'll do is that on the last one the mid one sorry i will just take the measurement i have there and divide it into two and i'll go ahead and just mark it down so whatever measurement you have there go ahead and mark it down now i'm going to use my rule like so so notice how i'm placing my rule i'm placing the curve part of my rule like so placing it from the edge of the first one to the mid of the midpoint of the second one and then i'm going to connect them together you want to ensure you're placing your your rule accurately if your rule is in place accurately um you end up making mistakes okay now from the second one i'll place from that midpoint to the edge of the last one now um in this type of neckline making a mistake with placing your rule can cost you a lot and your scallop neckline will not come out looking as it should so after doing that i just went in with my scissors to cut out the parts i will not be needing so we can see how this looks like so this is what it looks like while open up so this is why i like saying is a flowy type of neckline because it has like this flows and how it goes it's also a beautiful type of neckline you should try out if you've not done this before so we'll go on to label this this is the scallop neckline all right so the next one we're working on is the rectangular 
neckline. Now, this neckline is actually an easy type of neckline to make. Now, for the neck depth, I'm going to use a neck depth of seven inches and I marked it down. So, I advise you use five or six inches so that your, the, this thing is not so deep. Then for the neck width, I went in from the arm area by two inches. Now you can simply um, do whatever you like on this type of neckline. So I'll just box this up. Okay, just box it up. Like the name goes is a rectangular neckline. It means you'll just have to have a rectangle. So the rectangle, you have two sides bigger than the other side. And then I'll just go ahead to cut it out. Like I said, you should use five to six inches as your depth so that it is not so wide so after doing this i noticed that it was so wide i've not tried this type of neckline before so this was actually the first time of doing this and i noticed how deep it was so take my word for it and then use um five to six inches so that it is not so deep okay so i just went on to label that that is a rectangular neckline so just keep that aside the next one we're working on is the asymmetric neckline so for this we're going to be working with a neck width of three and a half inches and then a neck depth of six and a half inches so i marked three and a half inches as my neck width and then six and a half inches for the neck depth so after marking this on the point now remember my paper is folded here i will open this up um what I'll do is that from the center towards my my side, that's towards the right side, I will go on and towards the left side, sorry, I'll go on and mark the neck width of three and a half inches again, and then the neck depth of six and a half inches. So you can see how I marked that down. And I will just um draw a line connecting those points I have marked together. Now your asymmetry can be either on the left or on the right, depending on where you want it to be. So what we'll do is go ahead and just connect this with our curve rule to the other end, that's to the right side. This simply means our um, the design, the asymmetry will be on the left side. So if you're connecting from the other side, it means it will be on the right side. So it simply depends on the position where you want this to be. So you need to take note of where you want this to be, especially if you're making this kind of neckline for a client so that um, you don't want it to be on the right and then it appears on the left, all right? So after doing that, I just went ahead to cut this out. Now note that um, the edges of your asymmetry can be more curved than what we have here, or you can have the edges sharp, all right? So this is what I have after I did that. So you can see how this looks like. Now, like I said, you can have this appearing on the right side, or you can have this on the left side, wherever you choose to ensure you note that down. So go on and label this. This is the asymmetric neckline. You can see how pretty this looks. So the last but not the least on our list is the strapless neckline. I'm sorry about my lightning. It just went off. So for this, I just came down from the um, the beginning to mark seven inches. I didn't want this in this case to be affecting the, the chest area. So from that, I'm going to get the midpoint of my arm home. I will just take the measurement of the arm home. So you're going to be placing your tape in the curved way and not in the straight way so that you can get your accurate measurements. And I'm going to mark that down. So what I'll do is to just connect from that point on the arm home to the seven inches I came them came down by. <laughs> All right. So if you want um, the strapless to be deeper, you can just connect from the midpoint of your arm hole to the chest point. Okay, so the chest point I used for this was eight inches. So you can just connect from the midpoint of your armhole to that. So this is what it looks like while opened up. You can see if you want it to be deeper, you can simply just connect it downwards and it will give you um, a very nice look. So this is what you can use for, this is the kind of neckline you use for your off shoulder tresses. Okay, so this is what we have. This is the strapless 
neckline. I just went ahead to label that. So this brings us to the end of our video. Let me know in the comment section, which is your go-to neckline, which is your favorite neckline and which you found easy to learn. Also, let me know if you've used any of those necklines and which one you found easy or you think looks good on you or a client you've made it for. And if you're yet to subscribe to the channel, please subscribe to the channel. Turn on your notification bell so you'll be notified whenever I post a new video. Please like my videos and don't forget to drop your comments and I will see you in my next video. Thank you for watching. Love you and bye.